getting clients like as a creative is a process that can work no matter what you're doing, no matter what type of clients you're trying to get, you just have to know what type of t clients you're trying to get. And then there are certain strategies that, you know, that we'll talk about today <laughs> that can help you find them no matter, no matter what the answer to that question is. Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's interview, I'm talking to Lainey from Design by Lainey, who has been on the show before, but this week is a totally different topic. So this week, Lainey is talking to us about five ways to use Instagram to get clients. So if you are looking to expand your business and start to actually make money getting clients and doing client work for whatever it is that you are making, this is an awesome conversation for you. Lainey also lets us know about an upcoming masterclass that she's doing. It's totally free and it's going to help you get clients on whatever social media platform you're on and kind of help you through all the mindset around how to use social media to get clients for your business. Without further ado, let's just jump right in. Lainey, welcome back to the show. Yay, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Again. Are you in a yes. different state this time? Because I feel like every time we talk, you're in a different state. <laughs> Yes, I'm in Colorado now, which we just bought this house, so it's maybe permanent. Um, you know, we're both engaged now, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do, all those kinds of things? Because I know it's probably changed a little bit since last time we talked to. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny. Last time I was here, I was talking about um, addressing envelopes and um, but now I mostly am actually out of the calligraphy game for the most part. So I do more stationary and then business strategy and coaching for other creatives, which is really fun. Kind of figured out that was my passion. So, so you're doing more of the design of the stationary suites and not calligraphy at all anymore. Yeah. I only offer calligraphy if they've booked their invitation suites with me. So not doing quite as much of that anymore, which is kind of, it's kind of sad because that's really how I started in this industry and um I mean I know that's how how you've been but yeah and I feel like a lot of the people watching are in those shoes where they want to be doing like envelope addressing and that kind of stuff so I will mm -hmm. definitely link to that video but it's also interesting that you're transitioning sort of into a different area now because what we're talking about today is like how to get clients and yeah. you obviously have a lot of experience getting clients for calligraphy mm -hmm. jobs, but now also for stationary suites and that kind of stuff too. So that's kind of an interesting like duo of things that you've been able to find clients for. Yeah. And I think there are certain strategies that really apply to everyone. Um, so we, you know, I do little Instagram audits for photographers and rental companies and, people who cross stitch and, you know, and people do who do calligraphy and all kinds of different things. So getting clients like as a creative is a process that can work no matter what you're doing, no matter what type of clients you're trying to get, you just have to know what type of t clients you're trying to get. And then there are certain strategies that, you know, that we'll talk about today <laughs> that can help you find them no matter, no matter what the answer to that question is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like a lot of um, a lot of the people in the audience that will be watching this today are people who have learned calligraphy either from me or from other people um, mm -hmm. and are realizing that they probably could make money doing it and are getting asked to do it by some people, but they're curious whether they could like actually make either a part-time or a full-time living doing it and are a little bit nervous mm -hmm. on whether or not there would be enough clients to make that kind of money. So I'm really excited to get into this chat because yes. I know you have a lot of good tips for that and like I said I think a lot of them are um, primarily using Instagram as their main social media I know mm -hmm. that you um, you guys have a new course coming out uh, yes. and like a bundle of resources for people on how to find clients which is amazing I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that kind of um, resource before I think it's mm -hmm. just so smart I think I should just let you take it away and then I'll like you know interrupt you if I feel like I have <laughs> Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, so like you mentioned, we do have a course coming out um, called the Client Bundle. And I partnered with uh, my friend who's an Etsy and Pinterest ad expert, as well as we brought in some people who are experts on Facebook marketing and branding. Um, so we've kind of got this like comprehensive approach. And then I'm coming at it as Instagram and then networking, because those are the two places I find most of my clients. I get about 65% of my business um, from Instagram. So um, today we're going to talk about five ways to 
find more clients on Instagram. And we actually created, we did a survey of like 300 creatives to see where they're currently finding clients, where they want to grow in 2020. And Instagram was actually the number one place that people want to grow this year. So if you're doing that, um, you're, you know, you're with the majority, everyone's trying to grow on Instagram and it's for a good reason. Like, you know, Becca has made a huge following and huge community on Instagram. Um, and I've done a similar thing, a little bit smaller than Becca's, but, um, but yeah, it's a great place to really showcase your work as a creative because it's so visual. Um, but then there are certain things about Instagram that make it a little bit difficult. So, um, I'll just kind of jump right in with my five ways to find clients on Instagram. So the first thing is, um, that I see so many people doing wrong is not including a call to action. And the thing that is most frustrating to me about Instagram is that, um, you can't directly sell on Instagram. So it's actually more difficult than a lot of platforms like on Etsy or Pinterest, um, your website, even Facebook, you can sell directly on that platform, but you can't actually accept any money on Instagram, which is really interesting. So you have to get people to like you enough to buy something from you, but you also have to get them to like you enough to go somewhere else and buy something from you, which is like an extra step in the process. Um, and the thing that you can really do to help with that is just adding a call to action. I recommend adding it on three out of four, 75% of your posts. Um, and this can be, it can mean a lot of different things. So when you hear a call to action, it's typically like a sales strategy. And so you're thinking like, go buy my workbook, go buy my invitations, go buy my calligraphy. But on Instagram, you're actually asking people to do a lot of different things. So this can be as simple as comment on my post or um, like, you know, double tap if you agree or something like that. It can be to go sign up for an email list or click the link in bio, uh, DM you, uh, respond to a question box. There's a lot of different things that you can ask people to do, a lot of different actions you can take on Instagram. And we're all going to have different goals for that. So, you know, someone might just be trying to grow their email list. Um, someone might be trying to make sales directly from there. Someone might be um, just trying to get more clicks on a YouTube video or a blog post or something like that. So there's a lot of different objectives we have for everything we post on Instagram. Um, so you can add a lot of different call to actions, which is really cool because then it doesn't sound so salesy. You don't have to just say buy something in every single post. So let's say, um, let's like focus on, I guess, people who are trying to get the clients from Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. So they, let's say they posted a picture on Instagram of a seating chart that they had done recently with the intention of more people locally seeing their seating chart and hiring them. Um, yeah. Like what, what would you say is the best kind of call to action to put on a post like that? Um, so on that, you can talk, you can get a lot of different things. You can ask someone to um, tag a friend who's getting married um, that's a great call to action, especially like we do giveaways and stuff. We want to tag someone who is a pretty qualified client. You don't want to just tag a random friend. Um, you could ask someone to go check out, like if you have a free download of how to create a seating chart or a blog post or something like that. Um, you can ask someone, you can say, you know, reach out to us via our contact form and talk about how far in advance they need to order their seating chart. Um, you can talk about the advantages of a seating chart. There's a lot of different things you can do um, and follow up with, you know, make sure you contact us two to three months in advance so that we can get you on our schedule. And that's a call to action that's not as direct. It's not like, hey, go buy this right now, but it reminds them they need to start thinking about it and reminds them like, oh, if I'm getting married in June, I have to contact them and, you know, in February or March to get on their calendar. Um, and allows them to like put themselves into that story a little bit. Yeah. So instead of just saying like, go buy my seating charts or like seating charts listed in our shop, um, putting an action word behind it, which is like reach out to us, fill out our contact form, whatever it is they actually physically need to do is more powerful than like check out or take a look at. Um, yeah. Or even just I, allow them. I feel like a lot of people and you're, you they might touch on this in your next four points or something, but yeah. there's a lot of people would post a picture of a seating chart and just say like, here's a seating chart I did for a beautiful couple named Sarah and Alex or whatever. And it's like, that's great. And your client might see it, but they, there's nothing that you're asking them to do. There's nothing that mm -hmm. is making them see themselves in that or like mm -hmm. understand what that process would look like for them. So I think that's like, 
that's super smart to add a call to action for that. And like you said, knowing who you're trying to target is the mm -hmm. most important part of that. Yeah, we'll talk about um, in another point about like envisioning themselves as part of okay. that. Um, but it's really, there's a huge difference. Like you see it as obvious, like I posted a seating chart. That obviously means that I sell seating charts. But what's weird is that people don't make that connection unless you make it for them. Mm -hmm. So it might feel, it might feel a little salesy. It might feel a little awkward at first, but it's, um, it's just creating that connection of like, reminder, I sell these. Like, cause I'll get people who reach out to me all the time that are like, do you make wedding invitations? And it's like, I That's found you literally all I post. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> um, so people just, you see this as obvious because you live in it every day and it's who you are and it's what you're posting all the time, but it's not always obvious for people. So um, make that connection really obvious for them. And then um, kind of peripheral things, like if three out of four posts seems like a lot to you and you don't have quite as much that you feel comfortable saying, um, maybe a couple of those make it just like, comment and tell me, tell me your favorite colors for your wedding. Tell me what type of calligraphy style you like best. And that's a way that you're not officially getting clients from that, but you're growing your audience, you're growing your engagement on Instagram, which is going to um, kind of peripherally, that's maybe not a word, <laughs> lead to getting more clients. Um, okay, so point number two is just to break things down. Um, I see this a lot from people who, um, post these like beautiful images that they spend an hour styling. It's a full invitation suite, a full envelope with calligraphy or a big job that they've done. Um, and that is a really awesome thing to do on Pinterest, on your website, on Etsy. But on Instagram, people really like to see behind the scenes. People really like to see the process. Um, and that's part of them envisioning themselves in that. Um, but you have to break it down for them, which helps you communicate all the work that goes into it, all the expertise you have that you're putting into this project and why you're charging so much. So when people see something, they see it, that it's expensive, it helps for them to see those like smaller um, details and all the work that goes into it. Um, we have a post, I'll ask Becca to link it in the description, that's like how we got 13 different photos for Instagram out of one invitation suite. And so all that takes is just breaking it down a little further. And what it does is it makes people really like makes people involved in the process. Like if you post 13 photos of the same suite and then finally post a picture of it all together, they're like waiting for that. They're like, Oh, I've seen this coming together for the past couple of weeks. Like it puts them um, in that process with you. One thing that is going to help you with this, um, cause you're going to want captions to go with that. And so, uh, my tip number three, which kind of flows from there, is to tell the story of the product. And you'll find a lot of people on Instagram telling you, uh, or a lot of Instagram, you know, experts telling you to tell your story. And I think that that is helpful and is important with a small business. They do want to get to know you. But if all you're doing is telling your story, even if it's powerful, even if it's relating to people, um, you're attracting uh, other people who relate to you. You're not attracting clients that are going to actually buy from you. And so that's kind of that balance between the vanity metrics of likes and followers and things like that versus getting ideal clients that are actually going to buy from you. So if you're, you know, say you're talking about like a TV show that you really like all the time in your captions, that might really relate to other people who like that TV show. Um, or like when Marie Kondo kind of blew up last year and everyone was talking about Marie Kondo that's great. And it's going to relate to a lot of people. You might get a lot of comments. You might get a lot of followers, but those are just other people who like Marie Kondo. They're not people who are going to buy from you. So when I say tell the story, I say tell the story of the product and it's okay to infuse pieces of your own life in that and the way that you work with your clients. Um, but that's more important. So tell it from a perspective that your client can actually envision themselves in it. So talk about the questions that you asked this client to come to these decisions, like why you chose a certain calligraphy style, why you chose certain colors. Um, you know, with my invitations, I often include like their little nicknames or the state flower from where they the couple was born. And we do like a monogram where they intertwine the two state flowers or something like that. Um, and so talking about that process of like why you made those decisions and how you worked with Ashley and Sam to come up with this um, monogram or whatever it is, is going to allow me as a potential client 
to view myself in that story and to see what working with you is actually going to look like. And so that's going to be more enticing than like, oh, this girl makes pretty work and likes Marie Kondo, but what is it actually like working with her? Um, and number four, of course, I can't have an Instagram video without talking about tags. So I'm going to include hashtags, geo tags, and just regular tags in this. Um, and these are so important. I audit so many Instagrams where I'm, they're not geotagging, they're not tagging other people, they're not using their full amount of hashtags. And if you're not doing those things, then all you're doing is posting pretty pictures in a vacuum. And that's okay. It's okay to build the community that you have. It's important to do that because those are going to be your brand ambassadors and your repeat clients. But most of you are on Instagram to find new clients and to expand your audience even further. And the only way you can do that on Instagram is through tagging other people and creating those connections between your work and other people and other categories and other locations. So um, I can break it down into the three that we talked about a little bit. So hashtags, um, I like to do a mix of some that are more general and some that are more specific. I typically recommend um, using at least 25, 30 is the max. Um, and with a new update, a couple updates ago, Instagram tells you when you get to 30, which is really nice. They used to not do that. So just type away, get to 30. <laughs> It'll tell you when you're there. Um, so I like to do 10 that are more general. For me, that's like wedding invitations, invitations, wedding stationery. And those are larger hashtags that are going to get more eyes on your photo, but they're not going to be as specific to what's in your photo. So you're slightly less likely for someone to actually click on your photo from those hashtags, but they have a higher view count. Then I do the other 15 or 20 more specific to that photo. Um, so for that's gonna be like gold foil wedding imitation or wax seal video, something that explains what's actually in the photo. And those are gonna be smaller, so they'll have fewer eyes, but anyone who's looking at gold, uh, gold foil imitations is more likely to click on your photo because it's got exactly what they're looking for in it. So I recommend doing um, kind of a balance of those. Um, and so, Think about for those like last 15 or 20, think about what's gonna make someone definitely click your photo. Where can you put that photo such that like someone cannot resist clicking on it? They're like, this is exactly what I was looking for when I typed in whatever it is. Um, and I like to think of places that your photo is gonna be used um, or that your product is gonna be used. So for me, that's like um, Florida weddings or tropical weddings if I have like a suite that's got oranges and things like that on it. Um, for calligraphy, you know, you might, like if you do quotes and things like that, you might do like housewarming gift or birthday gift or gifts for my wife, something like that. Um, think about the way that your product's going to be used and use those hashtags. Um, and then my favorite easy tip for hashtags is just to add an S. So people are either going to type in like wedding invitation or they're going to type in wedding invitations. The same person won't type in both of those things because people are either an S person or they're not. So if you come up with like 15 good hashtags and then just add an S to all of them, you'll get two different qualified markets on all of them. They're looking for the same thing, just one of them typed an S and one of them didn't, so. Do you find that people should hashtag their city? Or like, so for example, I'll do um, hashtag Ottawa calligrapher. Like, mm -hmm. I think that that's, helpful in some ways and not super helpful in other ways. Like I, I use it to hopefully get brides that are in Ottawa, but then mm -hmm. it's like obviously super not helpful for anybody who is looking on Instagram and is not in Ottawa. Right. So I think this, the same thing is going to apply to the geotags, what I say here, which is if you are only trying to work with clients in a certain market, hashtag the crap out of those. Like if you only want to work with couples in Ottawa, maybe, I mean, cause you do a lot of larger signage and things would be difficult to work outside of your local area. Yeah, I only do those locally. Yeah, so in that case, like you want people in Ottawa to find you. I have never worked with a client in Colorado. I've got my first client in Colorado right now. So I'm kind of the opposite. I tag all over the place. Um, and I typically, you want them to be relevant to what's in the photo like you don't want to tie it you don't want to have like an invitation of like denver that's got denver written all over it and then tag like san diego or something like that but um if you you know if you're doing envelope calligraphy it's great because you can make a sample that's got any place in the world on it so if you think that like austin 
Texas would be a great place for you, a great market for you. Do an envelope that's got Austin, Texas address and then tag it in Austin, both geotag and use those hashtags like Austin Brides, Austin Wedding, Austin Wedding Planners, et cetera. And that's a great way to connect with other vendors in the market, um, as well as clients that are kind of going to come from those markets. So True. yeah. And so with the geotags, um, kind of the same thing as we were talking about earlier, even if you're sitting at home, I'm in Denver, Colorado, I'm going to tag Denver one night, maybe I'll tag Denver, Colorado the next night, maybe I'll tag Colorado, maybe I'll tag downtown Denver, different neighborhoods. So try and like get your mind from, or get your picture from in audiences that are different. So even if you're just sitting in Denver and you can't, you know, and nothing in the photo is related to any other place that you could tag it, um, tag it in something like slightly different than what you did last night so that you're not just tagging a million photos in like Denver, Colorado, but you've got them on like different pages that people might be looking at. Because um, those are just great ways to expand your audience. Um, and then if you do like, you know, if you do wedding invitations and stuff like that, you can always geotag the venue. Um, that's really, really powerful because couples are always looking at those to see like how everyone else has set up the space, what other vendors they've used. Um, so venues are a great place to geotag. And then regular tagging is just like tagging anyone who's involved in your photo. So supplies that you used, um, anyone who's taught you techniques that you use in that photo. If someone like, you know, if Becca posts a tutorial and you try it out and you post a photo of it, tag Becca in it. Um, <laughs> and what this does is on Instagram's end, they make these connections between your work and Becca's work. And so they look at, you know, you tagged Becca, you both use these same hashtags, maybe your work is similar. And then, you know, best case scenario, maybe like Becca will repost your work, which would be awesome. <laughs> um, and you'll get new eyes on it. But even at like a lower level, Instagram is going to see that connection and they're going to start showing like Becca's followers your work on the explore page because they're going to see that it's similar types of work and think that people are going to think that similar people will like them. And so um, anytime you can form those connections, like I always tag other wedding vendors. Um, if I use a wax seal, I tag um, Artist Air, which is where I get all my wax seals. Um, anything that you can do, make sure it's related. We don't spam people. I get tagged in stuff sometimes that has absolutely nothing to do with me. And I always remove myself from that tag. And that's a negative on the algorithms part. Um, but the more that you can just create those connections between places and people and events, that's the whole point of like hashtags and geotags and then regular app tags. Okay, so that's tip number four, which is to make sure you are using all the tags that are available to you. Um, if you're not using them, like I said, you're just posting in a vacuum. All the only people who are gonna see your work are the people who already follow you. And while they're great and we love them, we wanna grow our audience and get more clients. Um, so then number five is kind of on a similar vein, which is just to share your Instagram photos and posts in other platforms. And it's really easy in Instagram. You can just click to share on Facebook, Twitter, and I think Tumblr is the third one. Um, I use Facebook and I just recently started sharing on Twitter as well. I assume most of you have a Facebook page. Maybe you don't have a business page yet. Um, but if you set that up and connect it to your Instagram account, it's just one little toggle and it'll eventually stay toggled. You don't even have to do anything. Um, but this is really important because we know that you wear a lot of hats as an entrepreneur and you don't necessarily have time to devote to being great at Instagram and being great at Facebook and being great at Pinterest and all these things at once. So if you're starting on Instagram, work on that use that to kind of like start your presence on these other platforms so that once you do have more resources to devote to the other platforms, um, you already have that presence there and you already have a little bit of growth. Um, and so when you add things on Facebook, you know, maybe Facebook is a different audience. Facebook for me at least is like my mom's friends, um, a very different audience than Instagram. And so I can still find clients through there in a different way. So the more that I'm adding those posts, to my Facebook, um, I'll find people that I know, friends of friends, who um, it's kind of just part of like living your brand, just showing it to the world, what you do every day. It's got the hashtags, it's got the captions. So when people search for those things, they'll find you. Um, but you're going ahead and building that presence up. Um, and then maybe it'll direct some people back to your Instagram. Maybe it'll just direct people directly to, you know, your call to action is still going to be in that caption on Facebook. So if you say to go to your website and buy something, someone from Facebook might see that and do it. 
Um, and then Pinterest is another great place to just, it's very easy to share your Instagram posts. It's not quite as easy as Facebook. Um, but I have a video that I'll have Becca link for you that shows you how we do that in like five minutes. We can link the last like 30 Instagram posts that we've done. Um, and you put those on Pinterest. And even though your Facebook photo, or sorry, your Instagram photos are not exactly optimized for Pinterest, like they're square instead of long, they're not exactly the perfect Pinterest photos, it's still building your presence there. And you can still, they're, they're linked directly back to your Instagram. So you're still driving more traffic to your Instagram. You're driving more traffic um, to wherever your call to actions on Instagram are driving people. Um, so it's a really great way to go ahead and build that up. And Pinterest reads hashtags and reads captions like a search engine does. So anything that you talk about in your caption, like you talk about wax seals, envelope calligraphy, whatever it is, that's all gonna show up on Pinterest without you having to like retype that in. So we want you to take the work you're already doing and like do one or two extra little steps that's gonna make a very powerful impact. And then once you start really dedicating time to your Pinterest strategy, you've already got like all these boards that are full of beautiful photos that are optimized, that have descriptions and hashtags and everything already in them. Yeah, I feel like I really like that tip because I think a lot of people, um, especially when they're starting out, they're like, oh my God, it's, it's just, it's enough for me to try to manage Instagram. It's overwhelming. I don't want to try and do all of these other things. And realistically, and if you, you'll hear a lot of like marketing experts talk about how it's not enough to just share your Instagram post on Facebook. Like you need to think about the audience on Facebook and really have a totally different post for them because it's a totally different mm -hmm. audience and blah, blah, blah. But I like the perspective that you're giving, which is like, if you don't have time to do that yet, Right. It's better than nothing. Like yeah. sharing it is better than nothing and starting that presence. And then like you said, when you get a little more comfortable with this, you can start doing it a little more purposefully. Mm -hmm. There's like a quote that's like half asking something is better than no asking it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, and then Ron Swanson says, don't half ask two things, whole ask one thing. So my idea is you put everything into like your one platform that you can, which uh, we're talking about this as if that's going to be Instagram for you. That's Instagram for me. Um, but then use that platform to like get something started. It's okay. I mean, Pinterest, especially it's such a search engine. So, um, like on Facebook, the, the search capabilities are a little bit different. Um, so you're mostly just advertising to people who've already started to follow you on Facebook, but on Pinterest, all of those things, all those words, you're like, putting in their database that point to you is helping you in the long run. So if you do this for a year and then you decide that you have more time and resources to dedicate to Pinterest and you want to start doing stuff, you have a year of search engine content built up. You have a year of connections built. That's going to be so much more helpful than starting from scratch. And yeah. it takes, I mean, like I said, it takes like five minutes to schedule 30 Instagram posts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's so smart. I think like, I understand where you guys are coming from. Like I was that person who had a full-time job and a wedding planning job and was starting to do calligraphy from the very beginning. And I had no time. And still it's just like, we're a one man, I'm a, I'm a woman, one woman show. Um, so I don't have the ability to be like perfect on every single platform, but I truly, truly believe that like perfection is kind of the enemy of progress. And that if you're worried about, um, you know, being a hundred percent on every platform, you just you can't do that. Yeah. That being said, though, I do think that um, it is important to understand, first of all, like, I think that the general idea of this whole thing is, first of all, understand who your client would be. Like, mm -hmm. it, is it is it someone who's about to get married? Is it someone who's hosting a birthday party for their kid? Is it, you know, whatever it is, and then understand how they would use that platform. So mm -hmm. Instagram, for example, like you said, they're going to click if they're getting married at a certain venue in your city, they're going to click on that geotag. So you've got to mm -hmm. understand that that's what they're going to search for, that kind of stuff. Versus if they're on Facebook, they're going to use it totally differently. It's probably right. a different person. It's probably a different age group, all those kinds of things. And so like, however, whatever you're trying to get a client for, understanding those things is really important. And I know that like in this video, we're just talking about Instagram, but in your course and in your bundle, mm -hmm. you're covering all the different things. So I do want to talk about your bundle in a minute, but I, first of all, want to mention one more tip that I was thinking about for Instagram. Yes. 
um, using the bio, like your, mm -hmm. your actual bio. Um, if you like, let's say for me, for example, I definitely want people to know that I'm in Ottawa because I host workshops in Ottawa and I do client work in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like if you're, if you're, if you want local clients, make sure you put where you are. If you mm -hmm. don't make sure you have a don't link, put where you are. <laughs> don't put where you are, or at least say like, I do wedding stationery internationally mm -hmm. or I, whatever, something that explains exactly what you do so that people know if they find you on a geotag or if they find you on a hashtag and they click, they can come to your profile and know, like, I think a lot of people just put their name and like cute emojis or something, but that's not helpful. Yeah. 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 One thing I see a lot is just people not making it obvious what they do. And so maybe I find you on a wedding calligraphy hashtag, but I go there and you don't mention calligraphy in your bio and you don't have like a call to action there and you don't have calligraphy in your name. And maybe your photos, like I see this from people who don't have a ton of content at the beginning, post like styled stock images or flat lays of pretty coffee and stuff like that. But I'm going to go to your I'm going to be like, oh, I need calligraphy. I'll go check them out. And then I'll be like, eh, this person's not a calligrapher and leave. Um, so make it, you know, very, very obvious what you do. And I see in the bios, a lot of times people try to get too personalized um, and say, you know, mom to this dog or this kid or what, you know, and I see a lot of uh, like follower of Christ, things like that in there, which I know is very important to you, but that's you only have like I think it's 140 ish characters that's Twitter but uh, it's somewhere along that um somewhere along those lines and so you don't have a lot of time to connect with these people and you need to also have a call to action there um that's going to really entice them whether it's like a freebie download or joining an email list or something like that um think of your bio as like a permanent call to action and then each of your posts can have slightly smaller call to actions I was talking about like comments and uh, likes and things like that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So run us through one to five again, just as a yeah. little recap, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about your bundle and stuff. Okay. So, um, number one is call to action. We want that on three out of four posts is my kind of magic number. Um, number two is just breaking things down and talking about it on kind of a smaller level so that you see the process and the behind the scenes, um, and thinking about it from us. Yeah. From not as much of like an overarching, this beautiful product, but how it actually came to be. Um, number three is telling the story of the product. Um, and we'll, we have a freebie that's 70 um, Instagram caption ideas that we created just for you guys. So um, that'll be in the link as well, which will help you a lot with that because it's broken down into different categories and little questions that you can answer. Um, so that'll be really helpful. And then number four is all your tags, hashtags, geotags, regular tags. <laughs> Um, there's like three in one. <laughs> and then number five is to share them on other platforms like Pinterest um, and Facebook and, you know, maybe Twitter and Tumblr if you want to explore those as well. Cool. And then the Becca added number six is use the bio to your advantage. Yes. Cool. Use the bio. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I feel like that's like, I mean, if people implement just those things on Instagram, I think they'll see a huge benefit right away too. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I know that your bundle covers other social media. So can you quickly recap for us what other platforms you talk about in there? Yeah. So we have um, seven eBooks, which are covering Instagram, Facebook, SEO, which is search engine optimization, like how do you get found on Google, um, Etsy, Pinterest, and networking, which I love. I wrote that one. Um, and then we have a seventh one, which is a focused branding worksheet or workbook. It's huge. And it's basically an entire exercise that'll take you from like beginning to thinking about how you want your brand to be. A brand is so much more than like a logo and your visuals. Um, and so it'll take you through an entire process of creating your voice and your personality. Um, and then of course those visuals that come on top of that, but like the values of what your brand should be. And I think that is like, to me, that is such a core thing that you should have before you even start on any of these other platforms. Um, and then we have a, a bunch of little freebies, like there's a style shoot checklist, um, there are copy and paste email templates that you can use to ask for reviews or to follow up with networking connections, things like that. Um, there's an ideal client profile worksheet, so you can really nail down like who you're actually trying to get and where you can find those. Um, and there's going to be a Facebook community as well. So you, know, you guys 
all love Becca's Facebook community. I'm part of that too. Um, so we're just going to add another one just um, to that's specifically devoted to finding clients on all these different platforms. Smart. So smart. I think people can really use all of those things. And like I said, when you're not necessarily ready for all of them, it's good to even mm -hmm. just like have those eBooks and have like an overview of what you should keep in mm -hmm. mind for them for when you're ready. Or like, you know, that you have them on hand when, okay, I've conquered Instagram. I'm ready for Pinterest. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for Facebook, that kind of stuff. So smart. Yeah. So, um, okay. I will link to all of those things, but if people are just wanting to hear more from you and get a little bit deeper in all of this stuff, because obviously we can't spend too, too long on this video, yeah. <laughs> uh, what, where's the best place to send them to hear more from you and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So Carly and I are doing a free masterclass. Um, we'll be doing it live on March 3rd, but if you can't make that, you can always sign up and get a replay um, sent to you as well. But that's going to be um, in a link. That Becca will put in the description and we're covering we're really talking it's called how to find client attract more clients using the platforms you're already on so if you're already on Instagram how to take that and like use it to get more clients optimize it a little bit um, we're really focusing on getting from this like hunting mindset of like going out and finding and bringing in these clients and wondering where your next uh, client and paycheck are going to come from to this attracting mindset where you're like actively putting out the vibes <laughs> um, and attracting those clients that already are qualified. They already like your style. They have the budget for you and they're ready to book before they even talk to you. Okay. Well, that's awesome. It sounds like there's just like a ton, a ton of stuff packed in there and I know it'll be really mm -hmm. helpful for people. So I will link to everything. And down it's free. Below. I don't know if I said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For everyone. <laughs> So yeah, I'll link to that. So anybody who is watching this as the video comes out, uh, you can definitely make it to the masterclass for March 3rd. But if you're watching it on replay later, because mm -hmm. this stuff is always on YouTube and definitely, yeah, who knows? <laughs> um, yeah it, it should be available for a replay. Um, and it, like I said, everything will be linked down below. Um, but Lainey, before I let you go, we have to do my fast questions lightning round. <laughs> okay. I'm so nervous. <laughs> this, I'm going to start, I'm going to start with, a deal breaker for me. Okay. When you put the toilet paper roll on, does the paper go down or does it come from underneath? I literally do not know and probably do it differently every time. Like I have no preference on this. You just put it on whichever way it's in your hand. I just put it on and I, my fiance like has a preference and he'll switch it around sometimes, but I just don't even, I'm sorry. We wouldn't. <laughs> Okay, well, the correct answer for the okay. record is that it should be over top. Okay, so you pull from the top. Like, yeah, you like would pull it from the top, not like underneath. Under. Okay, it underneath, okay. It would like unravel everywhere and just drive you crazy. That's true. Okay. I'll have um, to re revamp my ways. <laughs> who's your favorite Harry Potter character? Um, Luna Lovegood. Okay. I'm not there yet. Apparently. I don't know who that is. I'm like just reading the books now. I'm on the third book. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You'll meet her in number four. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, how good of a driver are you? Oh, like a two. I don't, I'm so bad. And I'm like, I've never had an accident where I hit like a moving car, but I hit like inanimate objects sometimes. Okay. Like a pole at a gas station or something. I just won't see it because I'm bad at like depth perception and so okay like or dislike Kanye West oh dislike okay that's the right answer also okay name one of the seven dwarfs mm, happy okay I like that it's always what does interesting that say to about see. Me? exactly that's the question <laughs> it's always interesting to see which one people think what of do you first. say what's your first one well, it's like, you got to be put on the spot or else you, you know, because right. you said happy. So in my head, I'm like grumpy, but at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one more question. If there's yeah. a spider in your house, do you kill it or do you set it free? Oh, I kill it. Hmm. I recently had a mouse though and I captured it. Yeah. That you can't just like. In squish. a Tupperware and yeah. Yeah. took him to a park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, well, Lainey, thanks so much for coming on here for the third time. Totally different. Oh than, yeah, I know, right? That's um, so crazy. We've done three very different topics, though. So for anybody who hasn't seen the other two, I'll link to those. I'll link to all the freebies Lainey's giving us, and I'll link to the masterclass. So um, I think this is going to be really helpful for anybody who ever wants to get a client on any social media platform, honestly. <laughs> yes. And they're the same, similar strategies across all of them, which mm -hmm. is what I and kind of what we wanted with this like comprehensive look at all the different places um, that are most popular with creatives. So. Cool. All right. Well, thanks again. And uh, I'm sure someday we'll have you on here for a fourth episode topic, <laughs> topic to be determined. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to come up with some very new business venture because I feel like <laughs> in a lot of different <laughs> directions. Yeah. All right, Lainey. Well, I'll talk thanks, to you Sasha. later. Bye. Bye.